We are indeed all one team. OK, we're going to talk all things Crystal Palace, Liverpool. It is your game, isn't it, Don? It is. You are doing the Don commentary Moffin's on it. Don Mottram's there tomorrow. Oh, yes. Well, before we get into it, should we talk about the awards that Liverpool have just picked up? Of course, Jurgen Klopp got the FIFA Best Men's Coach of mm -hmm. the Year award. And then three of the Liverpool players made it into the Best Eleven, which was incredible. VVD, Trent and Alisson. But, I mean, I guess these are the moments that, as a player... You must dream off, right, Leroy? Absolutely. And what Jurgen Klopp did really well, it wasn't just the players, it was his coaching staff as well. Because he said, am I the best coach in the world? No. Have I got the best coaching staff in the world? Yes. And that's really where he wants to give credit to those people around him. But that makes him the best manager in the world for getting the best coaches in the world uh, around him. And I just, I just think that's what Klopp's done. Not to that, just the, the team around him, but to the whole club. He's brought everybody together. That's why, you know, you think, oh, Liverpool are up against it. But you've got this, this thing that's behind him, this invisible force, which is everybody is just on the same track. And that's why he's an outstanding coach. It's not just about putting sessions on, uh, on the training pitch. It's what happens around the ground. It's about what people, other jobs that people do, recognising the work and the hard work that goes into getting that football team onto the pitch. And I think that's what he spends most of his time doing, bringing the whole community together. And that's why Liverpool have that strength, that invisible strength that no one seems to be able to replicate. And Don, you know, he, as the manager, he doesn't want to keep going on about the players that are in But we can. Yeah. This, is, this is our job to mm. do it. And if you consider that Liverpool are now top of the Premier League with the players they've had out, with the performance they put on midweek against Tottenham. Yep. What a phenomenal job everybody at that football club has done this season. It's incredible, JJ. And, and, and I was one of them that sort of scoffed about a year ago when I heard that Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp brought in a throw-in coach. I was, because I still find it bizarre, because mm. of my old-school mentality. But that's, I guess, what Leroy's trying to say, is, is Jurgen Klopp can't do it all. Now, he can't physically do it all as a manager, so he has a, he has a team around him that he absolutely trusts. If he steps away from the training ground and a throw-in coach is doing his 15 minutes, then he can, he can, he can let him do his thing and let him coach. Then you, your time's up by about another 15 people, all guys behind the scenes. And for Liverpool to be where they are, it's such a tricky start of the season. Losing Van Dijk and getting walloped 7 2 when Van Dijk played against Villa. And some of the results and the performances, you thought, well, in this season of all seasons, this is going to be bizarre and everyone's got a chance. Mm. There's so many teams that can put their hands up and say, don't forget us, by the way, we've got a chance, and they have, and rightly so, and they have to be in the conversation. But for Liverpool now to be three points clear, it's a remarkable job that this man's been doing over the years. Yep, and to be top of the tree at Christmas, see what I did? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Like like right. And coming yeah. off the back of that first season, by the way, when everyone sort of laughed at Jurgen Klopp, because he kept getting to finals and he couldn't win. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone had yeah. him down as this sort of loser, if you like. But he knew exactly where he wanted this team to go. He mm. did. And let's talk about, well, I mean, there's so many players to pick out, but Bobby Firmino. I mean, oh. he, we've all been behind him. You know, it's been really difficult for him because with Jota coming into the side, everyone's been questioning him. We all know what he's capable of. But for him to score that goal in the manner that he scored it was mm -hmm. just brilliant for him. You could see how much it meant to him as well. You see, look, it's, it's incredible. I mean, talk about great management. When he was having a really difficult time, that guy, Jurgen Klopp, came out and said, just, look, he is so important to us. And he wasn't playing the best that, that Robbie's played in, in his career, but he knew that how important he was to Salah, to Mare, to those midfield players, that when they look up, they know they've got an easy pass into him. Makes the job everybody so much easier, but doesn't get the, the plaudits because he doesn't mm -hmm. score the goals. But then you saw he sticks with him, he doesn't back down, he gives him his head, he says, look, you're doing well. That's the most difficult part of management, when players aren't playing well. It's easy just to drop them and say, look, we'll put someone else in. But he's, look at that. Do you know what I like about that, Le Leroy? Right. Running straight to the cop end. Yeah. Fans back in the stadium. Mm. You know, he knows what it means to the fans, and, and, and they've had his back. As you said, you know, he went through some performances where you start to ask the question, is his form just dipping? The, the centre-forward teams around the world, and there's a, there's a handful of centre-forwards where you don't mind if they're not scoring because of what they do for the team and how they contribute. He's probably one of the best ones. Diego Costa at Chelsea, mm. you know, he was one of them where, you know, you don't mind what he's doing because he's beaten centre-halves up. Yeah. He must be a midfield player's dream. Absolutely. And just yeah. very quickly to another player, I think, is, is... And I don't know why he doesn't get the love, is Gina van Alden. Oh. I don't oh, ever see him play bad. Mm. He never misses a day's training. He never misses a match. He's so he's reliable, isn't he? Reliable. He's, his performances is an eight and a half out of ten every single week. He could add more goals. Of course he can. As midfield players, you want to chase ten goals every season. But I never see the guy missing. Mm. He never, ever hides. It's just, it just, he's doing the job that the manager wants. And when he came off the bench in that famous Champions League game against Barcelona, mm. 
where he was a little bit disappointed that he didn't get the start, he mm. scored twice because that's what the manager wanted. I mean, I just want to say, by the way, uh, Bobby Firmino has cult hero status at Anfield and mm -hmm. he, he's yeah. loved and adored by, by the fans. But this is going to be a tricky game this weekend yeah. against Crystal Palace, Leroy. It is, because we know what Crystal Palace do and, and they relish playing teams like like Liverpool, because they have got nothing to do. I know you don't like it, Don, but they have got nothing to lose. They will sit back, they'll play on the counter-attack. Obviously, Christian Benteke all of a sudden is in form and gets sent off. You know, he's a typical Christian. You know, he's doing all right. But I think they've got enough weapons, you know, Wilfried Zaha with, with, with his pace. Uh, I just feel that Roy knows how to play in these big games. He won't be concerned. And the players know how to, you know, just put, implement exactly what he wants to do against the Liverpool side. It, it won't be unlike Tottenham's performance against them. Uh, uh, and so this is going to be a really interesting game. We're going to continue talking about the game, but first, let's hear from the Crystal Palace camp ahead of the game against the league leaders. We sat down with Patrick van Arnholt, who's had quite... Lovely to reflect there on the career of Patrick van Arnholt. Let's pick up on what we were talking about before, though, because we were talking about players missing, i.e. Benteke. Mm -hmm. That front four, Leroy, just started to click with Zaha, Eze, Townsend and Benteke. I mean, with him not in it... Is that going to disrupt it a little bit, disrupt the rhythm a bit? It will, because Benteke was finding his form again. And obviously, gives him that power and that, and that strength and that ability to hold the ball up. But are you, you had a decent season. He was their main man last season. You know, we were just speaking before. Um, we think he'll come in. But Eze has given them something different that was lacking, a, a, a different sort of creativity. They've got pace. They've got of the, the trickery of Zaha. But Eze is, gives them that vision. He's great on set pieces. He's got real confidence as well, wants to get on the ball. And they didn't really have that. They gave the ball away too often at times. But he's the one who can... You know, Zaha runs the ball off the pitch and, and takes the pressure off the back four. But this guy will get on the ball and he'll hold the ball. And, he, and he, you know, he takes his time. Really impressed with the way he's adapted to the Premier League. Uh, Don, does, does Roy Hodgson sacrifice maybe one of those attacking players and go a little bit safer? I mean, he's not going to have Benteke. Does he bring in Ayu? as a straight swap, or does he play Wilf and give him a semi-free role with Eze? Good question. I, I don't think ever Roy deviates from 4-4-2. He might, he might change it up and mix it up every now and again, but that, they're at their best when they play 4-4-2. And I could imagine a scenario where Wilf plays up front, you know, off the sort of 10, and then he's got Bachuai, your IU, so he's got decisions to make there. He's, yeah. got, he's got, you know, two to choose from who plays the Wilf. And he could go Schlupp, he could go Townsend, Eze, so he's got plenty of options. Um, especially going forward. So we talk about Van Arnold getting forward and scoring goals. When they're on at Palace, and they have been on it quite a few times, they're a good side to watch. I was at the game when they, when they battered Leeds 4-1. Great game of football, and, and the front men were terrific on the day. But wide areas, the relationships that they have in twos everywhere, two centre-halves, two full-backs, full-backs and wingers, centre-forward, centre-midfield players, they're a hard side to try and break down. And is that the point, actually, that Dom makes, Leroy, that... This season, in comparison to previous seasons under Roy, he actually finally has options. He has different players battling for the same position, which is what every manager wants. Yeah, they've invested wisely. A couple of players have come back into form, which you thought all their, their time was spent at, at, at Palace. And I, I feel there's a real confidence. They know each other really well. They know the system well. Roy's, Roy's a coach. I think, you know, he, he, he does more or less the same things all the time. And I think the players build confidence off the back of that, their knowledge, knowing that this is what's expected of us when this happens, when we're under pressure, this is what we're going to do. Cahill's been important. I know he's he missed maybe the last couple of games, hasn't he? But he's a real leader at the back as well. And Guaita, the, the, the keeper, he's, he oh. seems to have found his form and found like a, a real... But the game he had stuff. against Tottenham. Apart, oh. Yeah, oh, wow. apart from the goal, obviously, was outstanding. So you look, you look through the team, vast experience, vast knowledge, and they'll fancy it. They will definitely fancy against Liverpool and to, to pull off a, a result. And actually, looking at the last three games, there's been 14 goals in all three games. So it's going to be incredible yeah. if, it's, if past uh, fixtures are anything to go by. But what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling. Can I have two, please, soon? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it's Christmas. I know there's a part of me thinks Crystal Palace could get a draw. Yeah. Honestly, because they which could... Part's that? Which part's that? Yeah, which, which side? Which side? One side of it, they could get a draw. <laughs> and the other side tells me Liverpool will win. Right. But I just, I just think this is a fixture where... Liverpool and Jurgen especially, they're going to have to respect Crystal Palace. Mm. Yeah. If they think they can rock up like they did against Fulham, and they drew against Fulham, I can turn this Crystal Palace side over by four or five, that's not going to happen. They're going to have to work for their three points. Leroy, what I'm going to say now may influence your prediction or not. Uh, in the current Premier League table, on the waveform only, Liverpool sit 16th. Really? Yeah. Liverpool will win. <laughs> 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 right on cue, that, wouldn't it? I know. <laughs> OK, another a big game and a tough challenge 
awaits the Gunners at Goodison. And Bernd Leno has been speaking about the pressure on his shoulders as the current number one shot stopper at the club with a long and strong line of former goal.